Well, hey, friends, welcome back to the Clinical Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm always so happy to be on here with you every Tuesday. This is one of the highlights of my week is being able to record these podcasts and get them out for you. Because if you're listening, you are probably a wellness practitioner who is working hard, doing the hustle, trying to see your patients, serve them well, get great results, stay out of the snares of Western medicine and the big farm, 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 I'll call it the farm engine, the pharmaceutical engine. I really love that about you. I love that you're committed to finding alternative answers for your patients and really helping them thrive, helping their bodies recover and heal and thrive. And that's what we're all here to do. But listen, we can only do that so well and take that so far without having a business that really works for you because you signed up to be a practitioner. What you didn't sign up for was being a business owner, but sadly they both come and they roll together. So my job is, yes, I can help you with the clinical side. I've been a practitioner for many, many, many years, but what I really love to do is help you create the business that will generate an income that you love and will help you be able to see those patients effortlessly with ease because your business is running well, it's profitable. You have a team around you that is passionate about the same thing that you are. And you really get to go do what you love to do and not be bogged down with all the business things. But today, one of the business things that you do kind of have to pay attention to, and that is you got to pay attention to social media. Now, I first, let me full disclaimer, I don't like social media. It's not my favorite thing. I don't like it. I just don't. However, our people, your people, my people, they're on social media. So what do you do? How do we get them? Now you could, you've got an email list. That's great. You can e continue to email people. The only other way that they're going to find you is with your website. Or if you have like YouTube video, but really YouTube is a form of social media. It's not necessarily where people interact in groups or connections, but they'll follow a channel and they'll, it's an online platform where people come to learn and maybe communicate or connect on some of them. So regardless of where you're at on the spectrum, I think for most of us, social media is not going to go away. So today I want to talk to you about how much do you really share on social media as it has to do with your personal life. Now, next week on the podcast, so mark this on your calendar Next week, I'm going to be talking about how to repurpose one piece of content into multiple pieces of content to make your job on social media a little bit easier. But first, I wanted to really talk about how much to share about your personal life, because it's a question that I get asked all the time. Well, before I answer the question, let me ask a question. Why is it, would you say, that people are on social media in the first place? Why do people go on social media? Well, the title gives you a good clue, and that is because they want to be social. They want to connect with people that may live far away from them, their relatives in different cities, or the people that they went to school with or high school with, or old childhood friends, or an aunt or an uncle, or someone that was that they grew up with, you know, in a different city when their kids were younger and they've moved away, but they want to reconnect. It's a way for people to create relationships, to build connection, to create relationships. They want to be, people want to be social and they want to connect or learn something about someone else on social media. And that's what social media does. It helps you build relationships. That's the whole point. Deepen connections and build relationships. So that being said, if connection and building relationships is the goal of social media, why do people follow other brands or companies or pe what people? Why do they follow? Why do they, are they interested in what someone else has to say? Because they want to learn more about them. They want to learn, are you like me? Do you share the same values as me? Do you think the same way about health as I do? Are you like me or are you uh, not like me? In other words, are how much are the same are we? And can we create a relationship and a connection because of those shared values? It's different than just having a billboard or an, running an ad or saying, I do this. That doesn't help anyone connect with you. What people want is to build connection. They want to connect with people in as much real time 
as social media allows over real things, real problems. They want to solve real problems and do it in a really connected kind of way. And social media has really become that. So when used properly, I think it's a great tool to be able to show who you are to your patients. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you are a farmer and no, I'm sorry, back up. I got ahead of myself. Let's say you are looking for local grass fed on the pasture eggs. You want good free range chickens that are out. They're pecking the bugs out of the grass. Somebody's very sustainable, treating their chickens really nicely, like not abusing them. They're not in case. That's really important to you. And you're looking for a local person that does that. So, okay. So you're trying to find this local farmer. It's very important to you that they share the same objectives as you, right? You want to make sure that those eggs are really a certain way when they, you want the nice deep orange yolk. And you know that that's because those chickens are going to be on pasture raised, you know, grass basically. So you start looking around and you find them and there are people that say, we have the best eggs ever, or check out our eggs for the freshest tasting eggs, all natural. And we know what all natural means, right? Means nothing. Rubber is all natural, but we wouldn't eat it. So all natural needs nothing. You really want to know that these chickens spend time outdoors, that they're being taken care of, et cetera. So you finally find, after much searching, you finally find a farm, a farmer online and you think, okay, this might be my guy. And you find him on social and sure enough, you're going to start scrolling through their posts. This is just what we do. Or maybe on YouTube or maybe on Instagram, but you're going to find the farmer and you're going to start following them and looking at them on social before you ever make a purchase. You're probably going to be like looking, is this the person that I want to buy my eggs from? Why would you do that? Because you want to see them in action. How are they treating the chickens? What can you learn about them? How their farm is set up? How do, where do the chickens live? How often do they go out? How accessible is the outdoors? How do they move around on the grass if they do? You want to make sure that this farmer shares your same values. But here's the thing. The farmer, wisely so, begins to, on his social media page or Instagram, wherever he might be, he's talking about the eggs. But he's not talking about just that he has great, awesome eggs. He's talking about his family He's talking about, gives the chickens their names. There's actually a guy online, by the way, that does this. Like every, all the chickens have names. He's talking about the, his chickens and how this one has had some problems, but really recovered and, you know, Henrietta the chicken or whatever. Like this farmer that you're following is really loves his chickens. And you now all of a sudden go, oh, like I really love that. He shows the way that his kids are involved in the business and he shows you how there's wheels on the bottom of the coops that they're moving around out on the grass and then they let the chickens go in this nice fence yard. And you start to kind of form an attachment to the farmer and his chickens because he's telling you the story about his life. He's telling you the story about his chickens and how he loves his chickens. He loves what he does. And now you go, yes, this is my guy. I want to buy my eggs from him. I'm sure they're going to be the best eggs ever. Now compare that whole story to you just seeing a post that says best freshest eggs ever right here. Click here to buy. You know nothing about that. Great eggs for sale. 10% off. Buy three dozen, get one dozen free, whatever it is. You know nothing about them. You aren't connected to them. You don't, you didn't get a little glimpse of the inside of their world as you did with this other farmer. So think about the things that your patients might want to see. Think about the things that you are interested in. What stories do you always watch? I know I have a few that come through in Instagram on my stories feed at the very top. And whenever they're there, I always click. Why, why do I click? It's because I care about the people and I'm really interested in what they're doing in their everyday life. And that's what stories are. They're the way for you to tell the story of your life, your day, your world, what you're doing, what you're up to. That's all. And that's what the farmer did. He might create a post that says, hey, I have the great best eggs ever. But without the story, without the behind the scenes in 
his post really doesn't mean anything. Doesn't attach, doesn't attach my heart, doesn't draw my heart, doesn't make me want to buy eggs from him. So when you're on social, what reels do you watch? What person or persons catch your eye? What do you love like listening to or finding out about or what types of posts? What are the posts that you love? Those are probably the ones that your patients are going to be drawn to too. And they're the ones, if you start paying attention, they're the ones that sh- a little bit more behind the scenes. So stories about personal life. So here's a few things I want you to consider. Number one, avoid politics. Unless your brand Unless you as a practitioner, and I have to say, I don't know of any, but unless you are as a practitioner, very politically active in your community, people know you as being politically active and you've already established yourself as a brand that way, that's fine. But in general, you're going to keep politics out of your business. You may, same thing for religion. I'm not saying don't share your faith, but I am saying if that is part of who you want and what you want your brand to be, that's fine. But when you start calling out people or making things wrong, you're going to all, you're going to alienate people unless that's really part of your brand. So if it's part of your brand, awesome. But if it's not, then fly under the radar on those two topics and don't bring them up if it's not already part of your brand. So really when you share on social media, it just, you want to just kind of share the story of your life and the things that you're passionate about. What are the highs and lows? Like, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't eat breakfast this morning, for instance. I didn't eat breakfast this morning and I noticed that I was grumpy by the time lunchtime came around. Now, okay, pause right there. Maybe that's the story you're telling on social media. People who don't eat breakfast or they go, oh yeah, that's me. And I'm always grumpy by lunchtime when I don't eat breakfast. Oh, he's just like me. You see, now we're starting to collect people around the values and the things, the failures or the missteps that we make, I'll say, and the people that are listening. It's this, this is the big idea. You want them to see your life and the realness of your life because they're going to see that their life has elements of that same thing. And it creates bonding and connection. So you might want to you know, give them a rundown of what you're going to do and then take a few videos of what you're going to do during the day and just upload them. Always turn the captions on, which I'll talk more about next week, but you always want to turn the captions on if you're doing like a reel or something like that, but don't recap what you did yesterday. People want to see you in real life, real time. You want to think of it like if you're having a conversation with your BFF, but maybe not all the details, but you know, generally speaking, it's very casual. It's very comfortable. Kind of like I'm talking to you here. I'm just having a very simple, authentic conversation with you, even though it's over a podcast or um, this is a video that's on YouTube as well, but I'm just having a conversation with you. What you want to do when you share your personal life, you kind of want to create a reality TV show of your life sans the bedroom, right? We don't want to get into that, but you want to just create that TV show that allows them to see your life as it's happening in real time. Now, someone that I know, an influencer in the social media world, he says, create CMC. It means can't miss content. And I love that acronym, CMC, can't miss content. It's content that your followers are going to say, oh my gosh, I see a story that's coming up or, oh my gosh, he or she just posted something. I got to go see what it is they're talking about. And it's okay if it's a little bit personal, it's really okay. So on social media, there really isn't a reason why you wouldn't want to share your personal stuff, but the places that I would not go, definitely don't share your bedroom. Don't share the fights you had with your spouse or your kids. Don't share the things that are going to cause someone to have pain or to, Get it a little too close, but it's okay to, you know, share what you're doing when you're walking through the grocery store or, you know, turn your video camera on. People do it all the time or what you're doing when you're taking a walk outside or what your view is from your living room window or, you know, just like think what you're cooking for dinner, like what's your favorite thing or what you tried and liked and what you tried and didn't like. Like I just recently tried a delivery service and it was fine, except I started looking at the labels and the sugar content was a little bit higher than I wanted it. And I found that because I live on a boat, most of you know that right now in my life, I live on a boat, on a 48 foot boat. And uh, I, don't, I have a small ish freezer. So if I get freezer things delivered, I don't have room in my freezer. And so 
a great social post, I haven't done this, but a great social post would be showing you my freezer. It's like, it's all jam packed full of these freezer things that I had delivered. I'm like, oh my gosh, I, how I, this isn't going to work. I can't even put like frozen fruit or salmon or whatever I've got in there. So it didn't work out for me. It doesn't mean the product was necessarily bad, but I just share that story with you. So whatever you've got going on in your life, people just want to know, and you don't have to do it every day if you don't want to, but maybe two, three times a week, just hop on and say, Hey gang, what are you doing? Here's what I've got going on today. You know, I'm seeing people, I'm doing the thing. And that brings me up, brings up another point that I want to make with you. And I will, I'm saying this because this is always my excuse. Are you ready? Talk about being honest. Here's the honest truth. I don't, I don't know if I want to tell you this. (laughs) Oh, I think my life is boring. I do. And so sometimes I talk myself out of posting because I think I have a two and a half mile drive from the boat to my office and a two and a half mile drive back. And if I happen to stop at Whole Foods, it's three miles one way because Whole Foods is right down the street. And I'm, I'm, my life's pretty boring. I never really go anywhere. I go back and forth to work and then I go home and I fix dinner in my little boat kitchen. And, but people say all the time, oh, I want to see your boat. And I think, oh, but it's because I think my life is boring. Do you think your life is boring? Well, if your life is, if you think your life is boring and I think my life is boring, then guess what? The people that you're talking to probably think their lives are boring too. So share your boring life and just say so. Like my life is boring. Here I am going back and forth to work. So when I share that with you and you think, oh, my life is boring too, that automatically then just creates that connection. And that's really what we want. We just remember we're back to what is social media. It's a place where we build relationship and we build connection. So be willing to document your boring self. All right. I'm speaking to me here. Be willing to document your boring self, your boring life, and share the things that people can learn from. And then whenever you can, turn it into a teaching moment. Like for me, the food delivery service was a good moment for me because I should have looked at the labels before I ordered. I thought that it was healthier than it was. And then I have a freezer full of it that's overcrowding my little freezer and then I'm looking at the labels thinking, oh, I, yeah, I, no, I can't do this. And I'll eat the food, but I'm very cognizant that it's probably not going to be my best style or my best choice for me anyway. But people want to know, aren't you curious about what it is? Or maybe I'll post it on social. I don't want to rat out the company because I think they're a good company, but it just wasn't right for me for a couple of reasons, but I'll do a post on it. Here you go. You watch, it'll come anyway. So there you go. That's my tips. Share, don't be afraid to share your personal life. Just avoid politics and religion. If it's not already part of your brand, don't let them in your bedroom and don't be afraid if your life is boring because somebody else probably has, feels like they have a really boring life too. And that just makes you more relatable. Talk about how you choose your eggs, like do a video in the store about how you choose eggs, do a video about how you choose cheese in the store. Like I have a certain brand of cheese that I love. And I talk about it with patients all the time. Like, this is the cheese that I like. Um, Talk about why olives are so good for you. You know, the fat that's in olives and why those would be really healthy for you. Maybe take a video of the olive oil section. What, which ones and how to test whether it's a good olive oil. Like that's the stuff, the real life stuff that people just want to connect with you about. And you say, this is the one that I like, but I don't think I'm going to try this one next time. And I'll let you know how it goes. They just want to, they just want to take a peek behind the curtain. They want to see the wizard behind the curtain, right? Not just Oz. They want to see the wizard behind the curtain, the little man who really does all the work and that's you in your real life. So that's it this week. Thanks friend for hanging out with me again. This is the clinical entrepreneur podcast. If you want more tips on how to grow a thriving, successful, and profitable wellness practice, go to rondanelson.com forward slash join, get on my list. And I will keep sending things to you to help you be as successful as you possibly can be so that you can serve more people because that's why we're here is people need us more than ever before. And collectively as a community of wellness practitioners, the more that we can assemble and collect and impact people's lives and get them out of Western medicine, generally the conventional Western medicine model and out of the pharmaceutical conglomerate, we'll call it, the healthier they're going to be and the happier you and I are going to be because we've been able to impact their lives. So join me, rondanelson.com forward slash join, get on my list. Otherwise, see you next week on the Clinical Entrepreneur Podcast.